welcome, welcome guys. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about a mod that I've fallen completely head over heels in love with. It's a really, really cool bit of kit that I actually recommend to any kind of player. Whether you're a hardcore player or a casual player or someone who really values immersion and just getting more value out of Guild Wars 2 and extracting more details and learning more about it. It is super, super cool. Um, and so what I'm talking about, of course, is the combat scrolling text mod by the developer. I think it's Art and Buell, I think is how we say their name. And this is kind of funny because this is a mod of a mod. This is uh, a mod of Arc DPS. So Arc DPS is really something that you're more likely to use if you're kind of a high-end player. It's a DPS parser that tells you how much damage you're doing compared to your friends and stuff in raids. Helps you figure out, you know, how to beat some of that more difficult content. And obviously you'd only recommend to certain people. But with the scrolling combat text mod, you can do some really fun stuff that anyone can enjoy. Um, so I want to run through it. Now the first, uh, there's multiple features. And I want you, keep, you guys to keep an open mind here because some of the stuff you might see in this video, you might not like much. But because it's entirely customizable, you can pick and choose which bits you enjoy. Now, for the purpose of demonstration, I kind of has, have as much on as possible. And we'll see what we've got. So, the first thing I want to talk about uh, is actually to open, a open by posing a question to you guys. What does this Shad Harbor do? As a PvE player, obviously, you, you, you've probably fought some of these before. Maybe they have a ram attack. Maybe they have a leap. Do they blind you? Do they knock you back? They, you maybe have something of a sense of what they do. Or, you know, when there's other enemies like Wivens that you might fight, or Crabs, or if you go back to Court area, this will affect everything. You know, Centaurs. Really ask yourself, what skills do they have? Because in Guild Wars, the way that it works is th this Shadow is a lot like us. We have skills, he has skills. And those skills have names, and sometimes even icons, and usually quite flavorful, fun names. If you look back at launch, you know, one of the big mysteries and secrets about the game, the existence of a new Elder Dragon, was hidden in an enemy skill name. Now, that stuff's all pretty flavorful and exciting, but the only way to get at it in vanilla is you've got to open your combat log, uh, your your chat box, you've got to set up a tab for like damage taken or something, and then you've got to look through. So here you see a jacaranda hit me for static field, and a spider hit me for entangling web, and all that stuff. And it's not that fun, because you're reading it in a list, and you're not seeing it in real time, and it's a bit lame. However, with the scrolling combat text mod, well, check this out. If we run over to him and we hit him, is to get his attention. When he headbutts me, you'll see the Shad Harvest Horn Attack hit me for 939. Headbutt hit me for 1497. Kick hit me twice. Headbutt came back. Horn Attack. And so you'll see what his abilities are. And, you know, you could even then go and wiki them or check in the log. Sometimes you have mouse saver. Sometimes they have skill icons. You can get a lot more value out of the things that are hitting you. Uh, so let's come over, say, to this forge here that's fighting. There's a forge war mage. The forge tend to be pretty fun. He has magic blast. And as we kill him, you'll see a lot more is going on. Here you see we dodged the minefield from this cannonade. These guys tend to be a little bit tankier. I'm going to rip his protection off here. Let's walk into his AoE field here. He has Rift Slash. He hit us with Fear Gas a second ago. Now, what's cool as well is as I dodge stuff, I can see specifically which attacks I dodge too. Now, that actually rely, re revolves around me getting an evade. But there, you see, he had a Fire Field down, and I dodged the Lava Geyser, you see. In vanilla, in regular Guild Wars, that would just say evade, right? But utilizing this, if we customize it in the right way, it, it will say exactly what you block or what you dodge or what you invuln or what you call or what you manage to blind, which is really satisfying. It's so satisfying. I honestly think it should be vanilla functionality in the game that the devs tell you what skill it was or what animation it was that you dodged because it is so, so satisfying to play. Here, I'll fight the Scarab Beetle, for example, and I'll use un uh, Unrelenting Assault to get some dodges. And see, we evaded Wing Gust as we were fighting. You see this little element in the center? So, so brilliant. Now, this mod, that kind of actually gives you a big advantage in PvP scenarios. So this is actually disabled in competitive, but it works in world versus world, and it's really fun there. I was playing as a, 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 on one of my Mesmer builds recently against a thief, and if you fight against a vaguely competent thief, you know, who will wait for you to dodge, and then they'll steal in, or they'll wait in stealth, and they're going to try and burst you or something. It was really fun to, like, dodge roll after I see that they've come out of stealth and see exactly what I dodged. Did I dodge... A shadow shot? Did I dodge a cloak and dagger? Did I dodge a couple of auto attacks? And you can really get a sense for what more is going on. Here we'll we'll fight all of these forged. Oh, they're just disappearing. I guess they're running away. 
That's maybe some kind of event that just finished. Let's find something else to fight. Something big. Something scary. I, I picked Path of Fire to show you guys in uh, this video because you do tend to get slightly tankier enemies. This is actually my third time recording. The other two times other players kind of run over. So here, the Choya. Have you ever wondered like what the Choya do? So basically... This is, he, you see, he's got Needle Shot, and these guys actually have uh, skill icons on there. Quite often, you'll see Guild Wars 1 skill icons coming back. This is all stuff that ArenaNet implemented. It's Guild Wars 2. It's just very, very unlikely you would have been able to enjoy it before. The uh, matter of icons, in fact, don't even appear down in the logs below uh, in the chat box. So this is one thing that you might like to run the scrolling combat text for. Let's fight just two more water gin. I'll move to another thing that you've probably seen on, on screen here. So here we'll uh, dodge. We're dodging the Ice Storm here. The water form we dodged. I mean, you guys have got to admit, if it, it, when I, you're probably on this video because you've been watching a lot of my other videos in the coming months where I'm using this. And uh, you can you can imagine the kind of just extra flavor and value you get out of this as, as time is going on. So, uh, what else am I showing off? Well, you will have noticed that as I hit these gin, numbers aren't actually appearing above them anymore. It doesn't say, like, uh, there's not a mess of numbers all over the middle of the screen that are confusing everything, are there? Instead, what I've got is my damage appearing in a separate area over here on the left. So, what's scrolling here is uh, all of my main flat damage. If it appears in red, then it means that I've critically hit. If it appears in white, then it, it means I haven't. This is all exactly as I've configured and customized it. You guys wouldn't necessarily have to do it this way. But so here you can see I just did a mace auto attack chain. And especially if you're like trying to watch a YouTube video or something like that and figure out what players are doing in what order. This is actually keeping it there on screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. You can see that all I'm doing is mace autoing here. Now what I quite like about this is you can customize this so that there's no text on screen. It's just the number and the icon and you can make the icons big. Which is kind of more immersive. But I tend to find that I don't really remember the names of all the abilities on my mace auto attack chain on Revenant. I don't really remember them. We're getting really owned here by claws and pincer snaps. Uh, but by putting the uh, actual text on screen, I find that now I'm learning more about the professions. Because the thing is, because I'm not a skill clicker, and because Guild Wars 2 doesn't really have any elaborate skill acquisition systems or UI in place, it's very easy to forget, like, what exactly is skill 3 on Mace? How many of you guys know that off the top of your head? Well, I know it's Echoing Eruption, and I've known that for a long time. Maybe you don't, but now that you're running this mod, you're reading Echoing Eruption a lot more on screen and seeing how much damage it does, and it's kind of like rounding out your knowledge of what all the traits are. And that's another thing. If I Legend Swap here, you'll see on the log, I hit with Call of the Demon and Invoke Torment. Those aren't skills on my bar, those are traits. So here I can specifically see, in real time, how much damage my traits did. And there you saw I did a 4,000 damage crit by swapping in to Malik's form, which is the benefit of playing a Corruption Power trait line, which is kind of a weird specific thing people don't think about doing. Well, now that I'm running this, that information is there more available to me. Now, you guys might think this looks too messy and crowds out your screen too much. I completely understand that. But for people who are a little bit more into the combat and breaking it down and seeing what's going on, this is a hundred times better than vanilla, which basis, basically just explodes a ton of numbers on your screen. In, in, in some ways, you kind of have to guess which skill or which trait or which bit of gear did what. Any runes you have, any sigils you have, all of that stuff will get printed. And you can choose to cull stuff out or make things bigger if you prefer certain skills to appear in certain ways. Um, so it's, it's really, really, really cool. The other thing I've done here as well, you'll notice, and again, this is just how I've customized it, is I've got my condition damage listed separately. I have my main skills on the right, and I have my condi skill, the condi damage ticks on the left. Now, you'll see, even though I'm using a lot of, like, if you guys know Revenant, you'll know that a lot of the stuff I'm doing here is kind of associated with condition damage. But I'm not hitting much condi damage. You'll see 90 burning, and then 489 torment. I'm not doing much, and that's because I'm actually playing a power build. I'm playing something really weird here. And because of this mod, I can interpret what's going on much better. And indeed, as you guys watch my videos going forwards, you'll also be able to see much easier what's going on, what kind of build it is the, that I'm running. So, uh, that's another cool thing you can do. You don't have to do this. You could just have the default combat text floating if you like and keep your UI as clean as you want. Um, another thing that I've done 
And I'll go over to my elementalist for this, for demonstrating this. And we really should find something cool to fight. Here we are. I mean, what a gin are pretty cool. The scaled Jake Drake use chomp. I mean, that's another thing. Sometimes I don't even pay attention to what the enemies are called. And now I do. Um, so here on my elementalist, after we dodge that magic blast, um, I'm going to summon. So these are pets, right? Uh, as far as the game's concerned. Now, what I can also do is split apart my power damage, my condi damage, and my pet damage. So look at this. My pet dodge rolled, my pet crit for an 800 damage fireball, flame burst, bite, burst. I can trigger their abilities. And so if you're playing a Mesmer and you've got loads of clones and phantasms around, you can list what they're doing out separately. You can even list out, like if I give my pets retaliation and then an enemy hits them, I can even have like the retail that my pets did as they got AOE'd, but I gave them retail. You know, if you're playing some kind of a like, weird build that has a lot of that. You can really break it down. You can have your pet specific condi damage being listed out. Now, obviously, to a certain degree, uh, what I'm most interested in as a player is really clean, clear UI that, you know, makes the game look good, but also has a lot of interesting stuff on it. So I don't want to go too crazy, but you can do that. Um, so the last thing really to show off, and uh, we might need to find a good enemy for this. I'll tell you what we can uh, go to for this. Let's go to South Sun. I'm probably going to get in combat while I try and go to this waypoint here. Let's go to South Sun where there are lots of Karka that evade. So like I said, I've been playing this a lot in World vs. World, so it's a lot more fun in World vs. World. But um, I also have it set up such that if I miss an ability in vanilla... It's just going to say evade, evade, evade. You won't necessarily know what was evaded. Well, you can obviously set this up just as whenever I dodge or block or blind, I get to list that out. Here we can do the same, but in reverse. So when this Karka here, I'll try and fight. When he evades me, and I have to be a little bit careful. These guys are a bit tricky, and I'm not really sure that this Elementus is on a very good build right now. So here, the Karka's evading. You see, he's evading tons of hits of Overload Air and my... Uh, you know, there he, he evaded my fire trait, sunspot, and then a little bit of the lightning overload uh, he evaded. And if they block, it will come up as well. You know, I, I don't know whether I have this positioned in the best place right now. It's just kind of quite ugly in the middle of the screen. Yeah, he's going to kill me because I'm not really not really specked out. He, he's low, but the thing is I'm playing a Tempest and he has retaliation and I have no way of getting rid of the retaliation. He spat on me, he threw goo. So I've done that as well. So this is a little bit of a sense of what you can do. You can also kind of, I, I have um, my aesthetic such that I kind of have like blocks of text scrolling in the UI at certain places. Uh, you guys can do fancier stuff where they're, they're like curved, you know, you have damage numbers curved on the left and damage numbers curved on the right. You can customize the font and all that kind of stuff. This is just how I made it look. Mostly what I want is in Guild Wars 1, this, this element I've created on the right where an enemy hits you and you see what they hit you with and how much damage. That actually existed in the first game as a, a native function that you could mess about with. But uh, they never did it in Guild Wars 2. I used to have it always up there on the top right in my UI. And I've fallen in love with it here, and I, I want to bring it back. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how to get this running, uh, if you guys like what you see. Um, and I, what I'm going to do in this video is live, I'm going to create another UI element, uh, which, you know, we might not like, but it will teach you guys the fundamentals here. Let's just see what this mower does for funsies here. I evaded the screech, but I also got hit with it three times. Did a little bit of condi condition damage. My ogre got summoned, you see, and I can see exactly what my uh, rock dog from my ogre runes actually managed to hit there okay so um once you've got it up and running now first of all for install because it is a mod of a mod you might be a little bit concerned about this but my main recommendation is to use the guild wars 2 add-on manager this thing's incredible i might do a dedicated video on it in the future the add-on manager is so simple for picking and choosing any number of different community mods uh, and with the add-on manager you can see what it looks like on screen here you'll just get make a fr fresh clean guild wars 2 install if you like before this you know and that's as simple as copying the guild wars 2 folder and pasting it somewhere and point the add-on manager to it and uh, just install Arc DPS and this, the scrolling combat text. That's it. Just check those two boxes, hit update on the add-on manager, and that's it. It's on. You're done. So once you get in game, uh, you can open the configuration menu for Arc DPS with Control, uh, sorry, Shift Alt T. I think it's Shift Alt T, right? It's not. Yeah, it's Shift Alt T. Um, and you've got all your regular arc settings here. This is not a video about arc, okay? But at the bottom, there'll be a new box here, SCT options. So this is scrolling combat text options. 
And this is where you can define everything. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit how that, a bit how this works. First of all, the scroll speed you can mess with. How quickly the text rolls down and basically gets off. I have my scroll speed quite slow. But you guys might like it to be really, really fast. So that your combat, if you're not in combat, it doesn't clog your screen whatsoever. I like to be able to read and see what's going on though. So I, I made mine, you know, fairly slow. Uh, you can enable a drop shadow. You can turn the whole thing off if you like. Um... Mac, I'm not, not going to go over every single setting for you guys, but here you can define fonts as well. There's a folder in which you can just dump different font files, um, and I'm using ITC Avant Garde Gothic Medium. I also my preset you got. I'll put it in the description. Uh, you guys can download, and it will automatically be set up exactly as you've seen on this video. I do warn you though, I I use like Guild Wars 2 features to turn off my you know my objectives text and my mini-map when I'm in combat and all that kind of stuff. I dynamically change my UI a lot. You guys might not like it because it might overlap with UI. Also, I play on a 1440p monitor, so you've got to be careful of that. You can have all the crits, be bigger if you like, and a couple of other checkboxes. Now, scroll areas is really uh, the main thing you want to set up here. So, a scroll area is just an area where you can put some scrolling text. So, I've got, uh, what is this, six set up. I have one really low down on my character, so whenever I dodge roll or block or invuln or something like that, it's going to appear on my character. I have this one here for all the damage I miss. Now, I might like to move this up a bit. We were talking about this earlier in the video. So what I'm going to do is click edit and you've got offsets. You can move it left and right. You can move it up and down. So I'm actually going to move this up and down. The width of these boxes doesn't really matter unless you're trying to have them be curved. You're, you're doing like a curved effect. So here you can see you can have text flow. I've got it flowing straight down. You can have it angle off on the left or angle it off on the right. And in those cases, the width kind of matters. But uh, for me, in general, I'm not using that. So width doesn't really matter very much. But height means you're going to have a really long scrolling list with loads of information on it where it slowly scrolls the whole way down and it's on screen the whole time. Or if you have a very shallow uh, height, then, you know, they'll only be on screen for a little while. And for, like, if I miss an attack or, uh, you know, they block an attack or something, I don't need to see that forever. I just need it to flash up that it happened and go away. So I have these quite shallow, okay? Same for both of these boxes. Uh, I also then have the uh, all the damage that I take is here, this one on the left. On the top right, sorry. And I just have it scrolled down there. That's about where it was in Guild Wars 1. Again, if I have a different UI settings, it would kind of overlap with some of this stuff. So do be aware if you're just taking my preset. Um, and again, width doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also have the text align left or right. Uh, over here, I've got this big box. This is all the damage I'm doing. And in future videos, I might get rid of this. I'm kind of just demoing it to you guys on the video. I set up a little box here, which is the condition damage that's going to come in. That, that, that text is going to be aligned to the left. And underneath I have pet damage. I could also set up pet condition damage or I could set up any number of other boxes. What I'm going to set up with you guys here is I want to see my healing. Ah, now. So, uh, I'm going to put my healing over here. I've already got listed damage taken. So what I want is damage healed on the right. Okay, similar to how I have damage going out and condi damage going out. I want damage taken and damage healed. So I'm going to click the plus to create a new scroll area and I'm going to call it anything I like but I'll call it healing done. And then I'm going to edit the healing done and we're going to move it over here. And we're going to make it really, this is going to be really big and really ugly and kind of gross but hey. Uh, so we'll have it, it doesn't need to be very wide. Um, and what we'll do is we'll make it the exact same length as the other one and we're going to make sure that the text is aligned to the right of the bar okay for damage coming in if you have a look here uh, damage taken I have it aligned oh I have already oh, sorry I have it aligned to the right already so then this one needs to be aligned to the left okay so one will appear here the other is going to appear on the other side now what we're going to do is go to the messages screen so each of these checkboxes is basically something that would be printed down here in your chat log. So physical hits you do, physical crits you do, bleeding damage, burning damage, poison, confusion. And you can send, you can choose to show them or not, and you can send them wherever you like. So what I want to see is all my incoming heals. So whenever I receive a heal effect, so that's going to be these three here. Okay, and by the way, you've got player out, player in, pet out, pet in. Okay, those are, those are your options. 
So whenever I take... Oh, by the way, I could see Condies coming in, but I have them turned off. I only have physical damage coming, and whenever I block an invulner and stuff. So whenever I receive a heal, a heal over time, or a shield, that, that's their turn for barrier, I want these to be shown. And so I'm going to edit this. I, I want them to appear in green. I think the green text would be quite nice. And barrier, I want to be yellow. So these colors are well set up here already. And what I'm going to do is it says, where do you want to output it? I want to output it into the healing done section that we just made, right? I only want it to appear there. So that's going to appear in healing done, healing done, healing done. In fact, we could rename this scroll area to healing received, really, if we wanted to be a bit more accurate. But, you know, it's only for our benefit. So then you've got editing you can do. And there's many ways you can edit. You can decide what kind of information shows up. So you'll see here, we can choose the text to change based on the, the, the profession. You, we, can have the te the, we can choose to have the skill icon appear or not. We can choose to have the name of the person that healed us or not. We can have the name of the skill and then of course the amount. So the, what this is set up as by default is the icon of the skill that healed me. The name of the, uh, no, and then we have the amount that it healed me, and finally the skill that did it. Those are the three that I've gone with, but you can obviously, you know, I could substitute this percent %S for a percent uh, %N if I like, if I want to see who it is that healed me instead, you know. So if you want to run around in the game and really know, or if you're in a raid or something, you want to really know who healed you for how much, you can, you can list that if you like. You can make the font special just for that one window if you like. Or you can have it as default. You can make the size special for that one thing if you like. Or you can leave it as default. So yeah, I'm going to have the icon, the skill, and the amount. So then let's see what happens. Let's go over to my Revenant. Uh, let's do it on my Mesmer, actually. My Mesmer is quite interesting because this is going to show so much information. Mesmer, especially as a Condi damage Mesmer, you know, I'm doing a lot of flat hits. You know, they're not the majority of my damage, but there are a lot of them that I'm doing every time I execute a skill. And we'll show it off in World vs. World, I suppose, as well. Uh, I I'm doing a ton of Condi damage, but I'm also delivering a lot of that through Clones and Phantasms, which means the pet menu is going to be showing a ton. In addition to that, the really busted builds, like what you're about to watch me play, have a lot of healing. So if you check this out in my equipment here, I currently have Tormenting Runes. And Tormenting Runes say, recover a small amount of health after inflicting a foe with Torment. So, that sounds cool, right? A small amount of health. We don't get a number or anything. Well, how often is that procking? How often am I applying Torment and healing myself with that? Do I really get to see, in general, in vanilla? Well, no, not easily. You, you can get a feeling for it, but can you really see what's going on? Well, here's, here's what we'll do. I mean, these are just wargs, so... So here we'll, it will take a while for them to DPS us. So immediately we can see there's a bit of an error here in that they're not over enough on the left. So I'm going to open up the options again. We're going to go to scroll areas. We're going to say da damage taken and we're going to shift it left a bit to make a bit more space. And healing, we're going to shift left as well until it's on screen. Superior rune of tormenting is quite a lot of text. Maybe I'd like to edit that and customize that away. But here you'll see, I'm not actually doing anything. All that's happening here is my signet is summoning illusions, which are auto attacking and applying torment, which is proccing my superior rune. And here you can see how much my rune is healing me, which is crazy. Now, maybe this is too spammy. Maybe you don't like that, right? Uh, you don't need to see a billion procs of 171. So instead, what we can do is go back to the messages and we can say, all right, well, I just want to see heals over time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn off regular heals. And now, and here you see, we can see he was lunging and slashing at me. And now uh, we pure AFK killed that walk there. Let's go over to this Drake here. And let him hit us. Oh, the superior rune of tormenting is still coming up. So is that does that count as a heal over time? Or is it that Oh there you go. I guess it counts as a heal uh, a heal over time. So so if I apply regen to myself with a chaos storm here, we need to get a lucky proc. I, I hope we will get it. I'll cast another one as well. Come on, give me regen. There's regen. It should be showing us regen. As it, oh, we were already at 100% health. I need something to hit me so that I actually lose a little bit more uh, health. But you'll see regen come up there when we self-heal. You'll see the false oasis. Here, let me just let me just aggro a ton of stuff here. God damn it, that, that's not even an enemy. 
Oh, uh, the, the doing it on Mesmer was a bad idea. Oh, I could have just distorted as well for regen. Doing it on Mesmer was a bad idea because they're just going to run around hitting everything else. So there you go. Regen's coming in, as you can see. And with any luck, they can actually get me low. There you go. Let's eat all these fire breath attacks. And if I false oasis here... You'll see Force Oasis comes in. And it should show skill icons, largely. The Oasis allowed us to dodge a few more bites. And so, as you can see, you can add more information. So, yeah, it's, it's unlikely that I'm going to be playing with heals on screen. I don't really need that. I don't think that's important. But I did want to put that on just to give you guys a sense of all the things that this can do. Um, uh, another little note. If you guys want to actually suppress the regular combat damage and floaters that appear that's actually an arc setting so instead of clicking SCT options you need to click into extras and here you'll see it says suppress floating combat text that will get rid of the vanilla combat text so that scrolling combat text can replace it all if you want to I mean you don't have to my main recommendation seriously are set up a dodge roll thing and a block thing and a mist and a blind thing and stuff because that is really cool to see the exact skill especially in jewels out here in world versus world or when you're raiding knowing that you dodge the right big raid telegraph or in fractals or whatever it is really satisfying to see the precise skill i really think arena Net should make that vanilla functionality and set up a damage taken area as well you know even if those are the only two things that you're using i think um I think they're really fun. So here you can see I'm retaliating a lot here. I'm doing a lot of retaliation damage. And the reason for that is because of one of the world versus world perks. Which means whenever a guard hits me, I gain free retaliation. And so there it is, really, in all of its glory. Messy, really, as it is now. Uh, if you guys, again, want my preset, it's down below in the description. As are all the other relevant uh, links for you. And um, if you guys make your own preset, if you've got other ideas, because you really kind of customize this lot in a lot of ways, better fonts, fun stuff like that, you can set up it with the Guild Wars 2 font if you like, or in New Crichton. Uh, you know, you can really go crazy with it. So um, do share those in the comments or over on the Discord. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I haven't uh, sort of given you guys any of these add-ons and mods for a while, uh, a video product, product on, on one of these. So I'm really happy to. So thanks, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. And I will see you on the next one very soon. Ta-ta for now.